What's going on, buddy man? It's Chuckabada. Welcome back to another Star Wars Battlefront video. So, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be discussing the new Age of the Rebellion update for Battlefront 2, which is due to come out tomorrow. Now, Community Transmission has just been released and contains a lot of extremely exciting content. So, without further ado, let's go. So, the main thing including this update is, of course, the original trilogy coming to the co-op. The update will bring seven original trilogy locations in total, including Yavin, Endor, the Death Star 2, Hoth, Tatooine, Kessel and Jabba's Palace. This is great as it brings an extra layer of replayability to what is already a fantastic mode. Along with these new maps comes new reinforcements for both the Rebels and for the Empire. The first is the Ewok Hunter, which is something that's been requested by the community ever since Ewok Hunt was originally released back in 2018. The primary weapon in this reinforcement will be the Hunter's Bow, which is dual firing modes. The default mode will pick out targets for you similar to Lando's dead eye ability and when zoomed in the player will have greater manual control over where the bow is aimed. This comes with the ability to hold your draw longer to increase max speed and damage. Additionally, when firing the bow, the Ewok does not appear on scanners. Other abilities for the Ewok Hunter include the Valiant Horn. This will not only improve the Hunter's attacks but will also grant them additional damage resistance. The downside of this is that the Hunter will constantly appear on enemy scanners when it's in use so players will have to be cautious. The final ability of the Ewok Hunter is the Wistie's Pouch. These are basically fire grenades that will cause fire damage to enemies. Additionally, the Hunter also has Hunter's Instinct which allows them to uncover and single out weakened opponents. All in all, this reinforcement sounds incredible and will definitely give the Rebellion an advantage. However, the Empire is also getting a reinforcement. The Imperial Security Bureau or ISB Agent. This character is armed with dual wielding blasters and is fantastic for getting in and out of combat zones. When the ISB Agent's assault training ability is activated, the agent will gain further increased speed and a damage reduction. Furthermore, the Imperial Intel ability will scan the area to reveal the four closest enemies, and every time an enemy is defeated, an extra one can be revealed, with a maximum of 10 enemies being revealed at once. The final ability is called Double Your Effort, and will allow nearby allies to regenerate their base health. These reinforcements look incredible, and I love the detail that DICE have put into them, such as the ISP agent having a similar uniform to Agent Callus from Star Wars Rebels. That's not all however ladies and gents, because DICE have also added 4 new weapons into the game, finally. Granted, I'm pretty sure all these are from Battlefront 2015, but we'll take what we can get. The E11D is a medium range blaster available for the assault class, and it has a range of mods including one to reduce recoil, one to add a flashlight, and also one to enable a single fire mode. Along with this comes the DL18, which is the one I'm most excited for. This is a blaster pistol which has a high rate of fire and can be modified to have improved cooling, reduced speed, and even a repeating mode. T21 is another weapon which has been added. This is a short range heavy blaster which discharges powerful bolts at the expense of a low rate of fire. This weapon can give increased zoom and can be added to have improved handling and a burst mode. The final weapon is a cycler rifle, which people will know as the weapon of Tusken Raiders and some may even remember it from Battlefront 2005's hunt mode. It can be given dual zoom, reduced recoil and improved cooling. The update also includes very many improvements to Leia, such as damage increase and modifications to her abilities and star cards, along with improvements to Jabaka and his bowcaster. Other notes in the patch include the MC-85 Star Cruiser and the Resurgent Class Star Destroyer coming to Heroes vs Villains. Additionally, the Wookiee Royer and the Imperial Rocket Trooper will be given updated appearances. Furthermore, troopers such as Death and Rocket Troopers will be updated accordingly. That's not all ladies and gents, there are also going to be several UI updates allowing the player more customization and freedom, along with many minor tweaks and bug fixes. This update overall sounds incredible and comes with some very exciting content and some much needed improvements and fixes. CT didn't even mention anything about Scarif which is due to come out next month, but we will of course hear about that more closer to the time. But for now ladies and gentlemen, that is all. Thank you very much for watching the video, if you enjoyed please feel free to leave a like and maybe subscribe while you're at it. If you would like to see more content about Front 2, then just let me know, and also let me know what you're most excited to see for this update. But for now, I have been Chuck Man, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!